I want to teach you a little variation on um, some of the different techniques. We've talked about twining today. We've talked about, um, you know, plating today. We've talked about um, some twill today. We talked about plain weaving. I want to bring all those together, and I, th and I think what's just a great little sampler basket. Um, it's really, you know, a lot of the things that we did in this diagonal little basket, we can actually do in a regular kind of basket as well. And so that's what I want to show you today is how to begin to put together um, a simple plain weave base. We're actually going to actually do it in this size, um, which is a lot of fun. You could even do this if you're, if you're uncomfortable with shaping. You could even do this around like a glass vase that you get at any home store or something like that to kind of help you with um, the shaping and even to be a cover for that so that you could use that for flowers or, you know, whatever you might, um, might want. But we're going to be practicing again, plain weaving, twining around the base, a little bit of twill, a little bit of twining, more twill, and just looking at variation in materials. Um, and then uh, this is actually done with a, um, a folded bark border, which we did in the diagonal base. I'm going to show you another border, actually, this a lot of people just call it the sandwich border and um, super simple, really nice to be able to use. And I think it'll go great on this basket. All right. So where do we get started? Well, we're actually going to start out with, again, I'm, I'm using some poplar bark here. This is poplar inner bark. The reason I like it, especially in this basket, is you just get a nice contrast between the raw bark, you know, of the, of the mimosa or the cedar that I'm using here or the kudzu and that nice white creamy um, barks. So that's why I'm using that um, for this. And we're actually going to be doing uh, a five across base, just five and five. So I'm just going to start out again. These are just for your information, about 20 inches long. So I'm going to find my center point just by folding it, put that in the middle, find my center point again by folding it, put it in the middle, and I'm just going to build out from there. All right. Just lay them in there. Now, this is going to be a little different than what I showed you previously in, uh, in the other plating things that we did in that I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between these. All right. The reason is I'm going to be doing twill. And when you do twill, it's nice to have a little bit of space in between um, your stakes. And so it gives you a little bit, it's a little bit easier to weave gives you a little bit nicer look and so you need that room in there so that's why i'm doing this um this way all right so there's a put this one there again i'm just leaving a little bit of space not a ton but just enough for all you measurers out there, I don't know, that might be, <laughs> what, two millimeters, three millimeters, I don't know. But uh, just eyeball it. I think one of the beautiful things about basketry is, you know, just do what looks right, do what feels right. That's the beautiful part about making, right? It's the intuitive part of, of the process. Don't get so caught up in, is it exactly this, exactly that? All right, there it is, just like that. All right, now I've got a little kudzu here and um, you know, kudzu is a wonderful, wonderful vine. It's gone from uh, this size, which is split in half and uh, coiled and dried. Um, I actually go into a lot of depth on kudzu in our twining course. Um, suffice it to say, I harvest all my vines in the wintertime, I split them like this. I spray them with a solution called Boracare um, and let them dry. And then I'm ready to rehydrate and size them when I'm ready um, to weave. This is what, um, you know, once I've put that through the jerry stripper at an eighth inch, this is what this looks like. Kudzu naturally has kind of a pith to it. And so I like to clean that out just by taking my knife and running that across perpendicular to my thumb and getting all of that, all that white, see all that white pithy, it's like marshmallows um, in there, but you just want to get all that kind of stuff out. You don't have to. I've made many, 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 many baskets with, <laughs> with it in there, 
but I think when you're when you're doing this kind of basket in particular, you want it to be clean. Um, you want it to be a little more tailored, and so that's why um, I'm doing this like this. Now, I don't need a ton of this. I'm just doing around. I'm just really doing this to to lock this in. So I'm just gonna. This is plenty for this right here. All right. Again, with twining, I like to start at uh, at that top left corner. Make sure that your your uh, two pieces are not um, they're not even. They're they're you know off kilter a little bit, uneven a little bit, so they don't end in the same place. And I'm going to weave with the bark up just for contrast because I like that. I'm just going to put that in, and I'm going to weave. just like I've been doing with my other twining. Remember we twined with bark, we've twined with, with some copper. Um, you could twine with just about any nice soft material. This could even be, um, you know, it could be a wax linen or a heavy hemp cord or, you know, whatever you wanted this to, to be. Again, I don't ever want you to take one of my courses and feel like, I don't ex have exactly what Matt has. I can't make it work. You can absolutely make it work with what you have. All right, you just have to be creative. So you can see I've twined all the way around this and uh, just a simple twine. Again, I'm going to take my awl and just make sure that I'm all packed in there. Just like that, make sure I'm even as much as possible. Again, I'm leaving space in there on purpose, uh, but I just wanna make sure that all of those are, are done evenly. And then I've got this little tail here. I just wanna flip it over. I'm gonna just cut these tails um, just to make it be able to go um, right inside of uh, the weave here. I'll just tuck it up under there. Easier said than done. <laughs> Just like that. And then we'll bring this guy over and tuck him over here. Tuck it wherever you want to tuck it, wherever it makes sense. Just as long as it's hidden and as long as it looks good. So that's literally all we're doing with that is just to tie all of that together. All right, just like that. So that is this. We made the base. We've tied it all together. Same thing with this version. We made the base. We tied it all together. This size, like this is how many inches? This is like a four inch basket. And I used um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and seven. This is a little smaller basket. This is like a three inch basket, I'm using five and five. So again, you can make the stakes at as many as you want to. You can, um, you know, increase the length if you want to. You, you can make the basket the size you want it to be. If you want to make a basket this big and you said, oh Matt, how long do I cut the stakes? Well, I don't know. Take you, take you a piece of your raw material and uh, leave yourself a little bit at the top, wrap it around, look at that, and then and then measure it. And what is that? That's like 32 inches. All right. So just begin to think intuitively like that as opposed to being a, a pattern hound. All right. I don't teach, <laughs> I don't teach patterns. I try to teach principles so that you can uh, take the principles that I'm teaching you and begin to learn how to incorporate those into what you're doing. All right. So in this situation, you know, we started with uh, some twill and so why don't we start with that here? That'd be, that'd be nice, I think. We've got, um, you know, five across here. And so I'm going to come and do what they call upset this a little bit. Just kind of fold these up a little bit. Just to kind of pre-bend them into place. They're not going to stay. You're just kind of getting them used to the idea. It's kind of like teenagers. You have a teenager, I have a teenager, and you have to, you have to kind of ease into things, you know? It, you have to kind of give them a little bit of warning. That's what we're, that's what we're doing with, with this basket here. We're giving these stakes a little bit of warning that, hey, things are about to change for you, all right? Now, I'm going to actually do our twill with mimosa bark that's cut at the same width as our stakes here. 
You can tell I've put these on the jerry stripper. I've chosen, um, you know, about a half inch um, width here. So I'm gonna cut that off. I got three nice pieces. When you're doing twill, just kind of word to the wise, it's best to use um, the longest pieces that you can. All right, that's just the, the easy way to do that. Now, as we're starting out, let me see if I can find it on this. Yeah, as we're starting out, you can see on this, I didn't just start out with the fat. I actually, because this is a continuous weave, I started out with a tapered, I tapered this piece down and then I tapered it up, 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 and then we were into actually the full width. I'm gonna do the same thing here as well, all right? So I'm just gonna taper this. I'm gonna start about half the width and I'm gonna taper a pretty long way here. I'd say maybe about a foot or longer. Just right there, just kind of naturally. So you can see that's, that's nice and tapered, all right? So I'm gonna start that in the middle of this basket and I'm gonna put it right behind that stake and guess what yep you guessed it i'm going to put one of my clamps right there i love my clamps all right now i'm going to use uh, i'm going to do a over two under one just like we did previously so i'm going to go over two under one over two under one notice i'm shaping these as i go right over two under one, over two, under one. I'm still in the tapered part of my, of my weaver here. Over two, notice I'm paying attention to my corners. Under one, over two, under one. I'm gonna let go of that. Over two, and under one, all right? Now, notice because I'm doing a five by five base, that's five, 10, 15, 20 different stakes, and I'm doing a three part twill, all right, under two over one, uh, 20 is not divisible by three as far as you know being evenly divisible. So that will give me that offset that I'm looking for in my twill or that pattern design, all right? If I was doing it, um, you know, for example, if this was uh, 20 and I did like a, a five, a three and, you know, a three and a two, that might not work out. All right. So that's why I'm doing this three and two against a five and five base. So I can have, you know, have that nice pattern that I'm looking for. All right. So I get around to the, where I was again, I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm just making sure that everything's staying aligned because twill by nature is a loose weave. Um, and so I like to like, especially like right here where I'm at, I don't mind coming and putting another, you know, putting my clamp right there just to hold it in place as I'm working. All right. Still, I'm going under two, I mean, over two, under one. Notice how I'm adjusting the stakes over two, under one, adjusting the stakes. And if you wanted to come in and add your little clamp right there, you could absolutely do it. All right. Over.